Let's unbox the Fleerview Pro. And there it is. The Fleerview Pro. What sets us aside from the Fleer View is the ability to record and control the camera, which is really awesome. It's got the GoPro mount, which actually is a little uh, next to one of these. If you're familiar with the GoPro mount, just, just stick it on there, works perfectly. And it's also metal and can be removed. So first lens cap, and this little piece unscrews here, and this comes off. So. You can remove this if you're using it for a tripod or keep it on there. It's nice. It's also keyed so it can't be rotated. So once it's set in place, it'll stay where you stick it. And one important thing, this is a germanium lens and you cannot touch it. The oils in your hands will actually ruin the lens over time. So the only way to clean it is soap and water and a lint free cloth. So keep it protected. On the side of the camera, we have a few little things here. First is an SD card slot. Now, it came pre-installed with an SD card. Let's pop it out and see what it is. It's a FLIR branded 32 gigabyte card, which would allow for many hours of recording. That's a lot of memory, actually, so pretty handy. The other two things here are buttons and LED indicators. There's a record button here, indicates where you're recording, and of course, there's a hard button, which is nice, and the Bluetooth button, so you can toggle on and off Bluetooth, and also it gives you the status of Bluetooth. On the top here is our quarter 20 mount for a tripod. Very, very handy. So on the side here, we have a USB port, which is used for power, video out, and data transfer with this cable here. Of course, we have the cable for the RC. So when it's on the aircraft, this is the cable used to control it. So just clicks on the side there, and pretty simple. In the box here, we have a bench cable. This allows you to power the camera and also acts as a card reader. So you can plug this into a laptop and transfer your data from the camera to the laptop and of course powers the camera and then goes to the camera itself. This here is a video output. So you can check the video and or use it for an analog video output. Pretty handy actually. The other cable included is this little cable here. Now this end goes to the camera itself and this other little port. The other end has three connectors. One of them goes to a PixHawk. In the future, the PixHawk will be able to control this camera and be great for mapping. The other two cables here are for basically control. You can tie this into a standard receiver for RC, and you can control the color palette. You can start and stop the recording, and that's all assignable in software. Now, one thing you might need, which isn't included with the camera, is a cable that allows you to output your video and power the camera in flight. So this is actually stolen from a Taro gimbal. Any GoPro 3 and 4 cable will work perfectly for that. In order to configure the camera, you'll need a few things. First of all is power. Now you can hook it via USB to a computer that'll provide power to the camera, but it'll come up as a card reader. It doesn't work as a card reader and configure at the same time. So eject the camera from the computer, it'll still provide power, and you can configure it no problem. Secondly, you can use a little battery like I've got here. I picked this battery up for about three bucks. It lasts a few hours with the camera, it works great, and problem solved. Just plug it in, and we're all configuring. Next thing you'll need is a compatible device to configure the camera. There's no plan to have a computer app, so you'll need either a smartphone or a tablet. So, as of right now, Android 4.3 or better, and Bluetooth 4.0. If you haven't got one of these, you can pick up a cheap little tablet. I paid 40 bucks for this little tablet here. It's got Android 5.0, Bluetooth 4.0, and the best part of all, a card reader. So I take the card of the camera, stick it in the tablet, and play back the video. Awesome. And for you iOS users, you'll have it out very soon. For the Android platform, you want to go to the Google Play Store. Then in the search query, type in FLIR View. F-L-I-R-V-U-E. And search. And first thing right there, the FLIR View app. Tap on that, it's free, and install. Before you open the app, make sure you power on the camera first. So plug into power. You have to wait approximately 30 seconds until you hear a beep. Okay, there's the beep. Let's open the app. It's a portrait only application. It's reading values now with the camera. On the first screen here, we have the model number of the unit. We have our current PWM three and four states. Right now, nothing hooked up to them, they're both low. We also have our color palette. You can also check our current state of the color palette or change the color palette from white hot 
to Black Hot, Fusion, Arctic, Lava, Gray Red, Iron Bow, Instalert, and Green Hot, which looks kind of matrixy. So let's go back to White Hot for now. We also have our automatic gain control, which if you change from linear to well, anything else, actually, it lights up a few more options. So we have our sharpness value, DDE. We have our automatic contrast control. We have our smart scene detection. Basically, it adjusts the picture, the percentage of that's light and dark. Play with these until you get a good picture, essentially. You have different options. Let's go to linear. We can choose either video or still image capture. And from this interface, we can do a recalibrate, which triggers a flat field correction, which helps retain image quality. Or we can hit record. On the main settings page here, we have our analog video output format, NTSC or PAL. We have our still image type, JPEG, RAW, or TIFF. We have our file format for our video, either H.264 or MJPEG. You can flip the video, horizontal, vertical, pretty easy. This disables and enables the noises the camera makes when you start recording and stop recording. And you can turn off the LEDs. It might be dark and black, you can just turn those off so they're not visible. On the next page, we have our PWM settings. On the cable they included, we were able to configure channels three and four. You can select what you want it to do and how many positions the switch has. So configuration, basically you can go disabled, start record, capture still image, pretty handy, and you can select whether it's a two or three position switch, whether low or high starts or stops. Let's go back here. The one we have color palette option. We can just either select a color palette or we can also do a still image capture. So you want to have one switch record video, the second switch record stills, you can do that. Or have a color palette switch like we have here. So three position switch, we can select which palette is in each position. By toggling switch low, we have block hot, medium, we have arctic, and high, iron bow. And our final page, the about page, shows our current firmware version, our app version. If there's a firmware upgrade available, we'll display here. You can turn persistent Bluetooth on. Now that's important if you're going to be using it, let's say not on an aircraft, it'll leave the Bluetooth functional so you can get into it. Normally it turns off after about two minutes of inactivity. Also, reset to factory defaults. If you've messed something up, wanna change it back, hit that button, you're good to go. A new version of the app will soon be released that will include additional features like region of interest. Now we're gonna upgrade the firmware on this camera. It's actually a really simple procedure. All you need to do is blank the SD card, put the firmware file on the card all by itself, and install the card in the camera. Once in the camera, connect to a clean power source. Now use something that has continuous power, not a battery. If it dies throughout the procedure, it may cause a problem. Plug into power. It'll power up normally. Now watch the lights on the side. We have to wait for the beep. Okay, now we heard the beep. Let's connect with the app. Okay, so we open the app. And the app should indicate that you have a firmware ready to be upgraded. You hit yes. The blinking light means it's installing the firmware internally. The Bluetooth device has been disconnected at this point. Now that we've heard the beep, we can reconnect to the tablet software and check our firmware version. Settings, about, and then View Pro version 1.0.1. Perfect. There are three important options to consider when you're choosing a FLIR View Pro. The first is what resolution you want for the camera, the second is what lens you want to put on it, and the third is what frame rate you want it to capture at. In terms of resolution, you've got two choices, 640 pixels across or 336 pixels across. On the 640 pixel version, there's a 9mm lens available which has a 69 degree field of view, a 13mm lens which has a 45 degree field of view, and a 19mm lens which has a 32 degree field of view. For the 336 pixel camera, there's a 6.8mm lens which has a 45 degree field of view, a 9mm lens which has a 35 degree field of view, and a 13mm lens which has a 25 degree field of view.
As far as frame rate goes, you've got two choices. 30 hertz, which is to say 30 frames per second, or 7.5 hertz, which is to say about seven and a half frames a second. Now obviously 30 frames is a heck of a lot better than seven and a half frames, so that should be the obvious choice. However, it's illegal to transport the 30 frames version out of the United States without leaping through some serious export control hoops. If you're ever gonna have to travel overseas with the camera, get the 7.5 hertz version or go to jail. One more crucial thing to be aware of with the FLIR View Pro is that it doesn't incorporate any over voltage protection. So if you put more than six volts into the camera, you're gonna void your warranty and most likely set it on fire. So don't do that. Now let's go flying. So we've mounted the FLIR View Pro to Raven here using our existing GoPro mount, pretty handy. And we have several wires for the side here. Of course, one of them, little black one here, goes to the BEC for power, also provides video. The other wires here, we're hooking to a couple of the outputs from our receiver so we can control the color palette and record stop. So before we go flying, one thing to be aware of is if you're using a 2.4 gigahertz radio, be sure to turn the Bluetooth off on the camera. That way it's not sending out a competing 2.4 gigahertz signal which might interfere with your control. One of the key features of the FLIR View Pro is that it records internally, but one thing you might not realize is that this internal recording is digital, so it's gonna be extremely clean. Tekkenstein went ahead and installed a little DVR on Raven, which is gonna record analog video, which comes out of the camera, just sort of like what we've normally done all the times in the past when we've captured FLIR. So we wanna compare the image quality of the two All right, so here we are up in the air, and what you're looking at is the analog signal being recorded on the DVR on board. You'll notice that there's a FLIR logo visible in the upper right-hand corner. Now we're gonna switch over to the digital signal being reported inside the camera, and you'll notice the logo disappears. Now I'm gonna give you a side-by-side. -side. On the left, you see the digital signal, and on the right, you see the analog signal, so you can compare the image quality of the two. All right, so the reason they went ahead and took the logo out of the digital signal is so when you're doing a mapping mission, say capturing a series of stills, that isn't in there corrupting your data. Pretty smart. One of the big advantages of the FLIR View Pro is you can have various camera functions mapped to switches on your radio. So for example, TechnScience got it set up right now. So I toggle this switch, it starts recording. I toggle it off, it stops recording. And over here on the radio, I've got this three position switch. At the bottom is white hot, which is the way we've always flown. The center is black hot, which is the way the military seems most comfortable doing business. And this is rainbow mode, which is kind of trippy to fly by. I don't think I'd recommend using that for your primary flight mode. But anyway, this all seems pretty straightforward and I get that. But let me tell you, for those of us who've been flying these systems for years, I love having these capabilities. Okay, one thing to be aware of when you're flying using a thermal imaging camera is that the image is gonna freeze periodically. This is part of a process called FFC, which stands for flat field correction. Basically, it's a way of keeping the sensor calibrated, keep noise and artifacts to a minimum. Now, how often the camera does this depends on the temperature changes inside the camera. So you're gonna see these flat field corrections more frequently as the camera's warming up, and then as the temperature equalizes, the frequency is gonna to tend to slow down. It can be a bit alarming if you're not accustomed to it because your image freezes for just a second, and as FPV pilots, that's something which we're all trained to freak out if it happens, but don't worry about it because after just a split second, it'll unfreeze and you'll continue on your way. So that was our look at the FLIR View Pro. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.